I'm in a bit of a rush. I've just realized it's the bike shed show this weekend. Today's the only day I can go. It's on till seven. It's now 20 past 12. I've just finished up at work. So I'm gonna shut everything down and then we're gonna go right now. Three hour drive. So I'll get a good few hours when we get there. Let's get going. Come on, Luce, I need you for your unfiltered commentary and review. There are enough Teslas in this car park. One of them is mine. <laughs> a bit of context. I worked in a custom bike shop for a couple of years and there before I started my business. Uh, and I do some wire and looms for bikes. Whereas Loose has absolutely no interest in bikes at all. For those that have been living under a rock, the Bike Shed Show held at Tobacco Docks in London every year is possibly Europe's best custom motorcycle show. With over 500 bikes on display, there's a huge variety, and I made a beeline for the race bikes. Now this is a Moto3 KTM, and I love looking at bikes that have really been used and got a story to tell. This is cool. But with the focus here being custom and bespoke motorcycles, we moved on to the next rooms, and let me tell you, there was all sorts here. And that's the great thing about custom bikes, you don't have to like everything you see, it's all about personal taste. Luce made a beeline for the pink Honda. I'm really into custom bikes that have obviously had thought into how they ride and perform. Something like this could actually be used on the road, I'm a fan. Go on, what do you think of this? Shiny. <laughs> Is that it? It's a Vincent Black Shadow engine with a Norton frame. Does that mean anything? The reason Luce knows all about feather bed frames is I had a crack at making one a few years ago and I went on and on about it. Time for a quick beer, they had Jubal Peach on offer after all, and then Luce worked out why I called my company Able Motorworks. Well, that'd be because of this guy, Maxwell Hazan. I was obsessed with his company, Hazan Motorworks, when he was building these incredible custom bikes. He still does. And then we stumbled across another classic, an RVF 400. This one was owned by Joey Dunlop. Not sure if he raced it or if it was just a personal bike. Either way, really cool. Don't confuse this with the similar looking VFR 400. This is a proper little race bike. Oh, it's got a monster sticker. Must be good. Kawasaki Green. <laughs> okay, so a scooter with a motorcycle engine. Well, that's just a bit of fun. But this was the point where we started to get into the bikes that were form over function. And this is where I start to struggle with custom bikes. Taking something that's usable, you can actually use on the road and making it less functional for the sake of it looking right, I struggle with it. I always have done. I can't understand why people will do that and make something less enjoyable to ride, less usable, even not as safe sometimes. Because to me, that doesn't look better. Something that blatantly affects the performance of the bike or is structurally unsound, even unsafe sometimes. It's just something I can't see past when looking at custom bikes. And it's actually a lot of the reason why I got out of working on a lot of custom bikes. I still work on some. There's a 1944 Indian that's had hundreds of incredible modifications, but that's a one-off. It's all been done to improve the bike. I enjoy working on things like that. But when bikes are modified for looks over functionality, I can't get behind it and I didn't enjoy working on it and that's why I moved away from it. Okay, let's look back at the bike shed. What's supposed to be good about the bike? It's a, it's a modern yam, made to look old. And this is a prime example. It's an incredible amount of work has gone into converting this. Is it an MT-09 into a scrambler? But you can't argue that the style choices in frame design here aren't affecting the structural integrity of the bike. And that's also exactly what someone who doesn't know what they're looking at picks up on. Someone like Luce. I do like BMWs. The problem is, so many of them have been done now. There's a whole room of them here at the bike show that there doesn't leave much room for innovation and new ideas on them. You've seen it all before. They are still really cool though. And this stunning Ducati had an odd location for this M unit, which is basically a smart fuse box. It makes me think I can make a feature out of some of the wiring and components I use going forward. What really made this bike show stand out were the bands that played, the live interviews, and of course, the food on offer. You always eat and then jump in the uh -huh. <laughs> Loose, look, another R100. 
los papás. <risa> In the right color. In fact, it had the right everything. This is one of the nicest bikes I'd ever seen. The one off frame, one off tank, just looked amazing, finished incredibly. But most importantly, that bike is actually usable. You could ride it. Okay, those forks might not be the best option, but it's a usable bike that would work in the real world. That's what makes that bike so good. Now I went to that show really want to fall back in love with custom motorbikes. And honestly, I didn't. It just reminded me of all the reasons I didn't enjoy it as much in the first place. Form over function is not something I understand or agree with. But what I do really like is improving things to make them better, faster, more efficient, things like my track bike. I really enjoy making something faster, efficient. That's a process I love. So I'm gonna keep doing it.